One more speaker. I'm waiting for one more speaker, but I see that the chairman of um, the SBL is online. So I don't know if you would like to say something before we officially comment. But we have a session for one hour, but five minutes for presentations from our speakers, and then we'll have the Q and A for the remaining 15 minutes. So while we wait for the chairman to say something, Okay, thank you. So the chairman said we can comment. So welcome once again. My name is Rita. I'm Rich and I'm the second vice chair for the Sports Entertainment and Media Committee. I have our guest today with us. We have Mr. Roxin Igelige and Mr. Oludotun Olulade. So I'm going to read their profile. I also have one more person, but he's yet to join. So I've sent a message. And once he joins us, I'm going to introduce him to our participant or before we commence if you have i don't know if anyone has anything to tell us in terms of what are your expectations for today's conversation or i'm just going to read our speaker's profile so i'll start with mr oludotun olulade he is an accomplished and award-winning filmmaker known for his exceptional work as director and, and cinematographer. His journey in filmmaking has been marked by a deep passion for storytelling and a commitment to creating an impactful cinematic experience. His latest short film, Lost Boss Found, which chronicles the struggle of the girl child globally, won the Native Short 2023 competition. Congratulations. And in addition to his achievement, he was honored with the best director Award for Stupid Finder, which is a collaborative project he executed while at the prestigious Ebony Live Creative Academy. I'm sure most of us know Ebony Live. And his most recent works as director includes, okay, I already mentioned that. And he's a producer, okay, so we have Ami the Mark, a production of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Ingress with. Team Culture Studios are most recently lost or found. Okay, I think I'm repeating myself again, but you're welcome, Mr. Oludotun Lulade. And then we have uh, Mr. Roxin A. Igelige. I'm sure a lot of you know him uh, from most of the publications we've seen online. So he's an entertainment lawyer with Roxin Legal and a UK alumni award finalist for the Social Action Award 2022. He's also a top global copyright lawyer and an entertainment lawyer for the year 2019 and University of Westminster alumni ambassador in Nigeria. He's a notary public, notary public and a chess member. All welcome to our industry chat for today. So for those who are just joining us, please, you can send messages to your friends and committee members to join us online as we comment. So I'm um, yet to see Mr. Uche join us, but I'll just commence with uh, Mr. Roxin. So my first question for you today is on, so as a legal practitioner, Mr. Roxin, um, what would you say are the legal uh, regulatory framework that protects the rights of creators and producers in uh, the Nigerian media and entertainment industry, uh, how effective are they in curbing piracy and ensuring fair remuneration? Mr. Roxen, I can see you online, I don't know. Mr. Roxen, can you hear me? Can you hear me okay, now? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Yes, yes, we can hear you. So thank you, Richard, and other members of the panel. Uh, what you refer to as the regulatory, uh, regulatory uh, body, regulating uh, to checkmate a piracy, same as uh, bodies of law put together. But first and foremost, 
what are the aims? Why did we put this law together? For two reasons, why these laws are there, this intellectual properties law. One, that a man should benefit from the fruit of his labor. Then two, for incentive, so that when these laws are in place, creators, they are unique members of the society. Like the lecturer of mine defined, creativity is an unshared part of God's creation. It's not everybody that can create. So this law being put in place is to enable those who have that creative muse to encourage them to create more. Because if they don't have anything they are gaining, can you hear me? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, 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 we can hear you. Please carry on. So if they don't have anything they are gaining, it will affect creativity and they will not run dry. So all over the world, when it comes to creative matters, there are laws put in place, which we normally call IP laws, intellectual property laws. And among them, since we have one hour, no need to ring my room, we have the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is the grand norm. Then we have the Copyright Act 2022. We have the Merchandising Mark Act. We have the Patent and the Design Act. Then, of course, we have judicial precedent guiding us. Then inside the Copyright Act, we have a creature like Nigerian Copyright Commission. And the Nigerian Copyright Commission know that it's also empowered to make some regulation. They are also giving power to create some laws that will also help to checkmate the activities of piracy. And can you hear me? Because I see you shaking your head. We can hear you, Mr. Rossi. Please carry on. You have two minutes, please. And the Nigerian Copyright uh, Commission, to be able to checkmate piracy, they came out with other subsidiary regulation in line with the Nigerian Copyright Act. We have like the, the, the Copyright Optical Disk Plant Regulation 2006, the Copyright Collective Management 2007, the Copyright Security Devices Regulation 1999. Then we also have a strategic action against piracy. These are, these are emanating from the Copyright Act, empowering the Nigerian Copyright Commission to put this in place to checkmate piracy. Now, I've talked, I have talked about the justification of this law. Now, when you talk about piracy, is, this is mostly common. This is mostly common in the film industry, music industry. It's also common in the sports, particularly in the area when it has to do with uh, uh, rights, airing rights and all those ones. But also, there is a, another form of piracy in the sport industry that we also tag as ambush marketing, which is a bigger threat to sponsorship. It's a form of piracy, but it is called ambush marketing. And I don't know whether there is any law in Nigeria against ambush marketing, but it's usually a condition precedent for those who want to host any FIFA, FIFA sporting uh, event like World Cup to put that law in place anti ambush marketing legislature before they will allow you to host. But in Nigeria, I don't know whether we have it. So far, the last time I checked, we don't have it. And so far, scholars have in unison have agreed that it is a, a traditional IP laws are not enough to tackle matters related to uh, ambush marketing. So that's why they come out with a kind of a special legislation. Now, what are the effects of piracy in our society? To start with, 
When we say piracy, we mean those engaged in an authorized copying of work of creators without consent. And some of the effect has to do with poor financial turnover, unemployment, poor quality work, and security breach. The issue of security breach, after the 911 attack, it became obvious that pirates, instead of going into drug to fund their organization, the laws against drug, drug trafficking is more stiffer in nature. They will prefer piracy because of the weakness of the law, where maybe in most cases, option of fun. So it, it has been established that there's a link between piracy and terrorism. There's a, there a link between piracy and terrorism. So you now have, now the challenging facing IP laws. We talked about that. We talked about uh, uh, the effect of uh, uh, piracy. I mentioned poor financial, uh, poor financial turnover, unemployment, poor quality of work and security breach. Now, the challenges facing the law, most of the intellectual property laws in fighting piracy. Now we have one, lack of popular support. Most of the IP laws, perhaps some of us, even in the field, we might not even have heard of a merchandising mark, mark law. And even lawyers, except those who are neck, neck deep in IP practice, when you refer them to copyright, it sounds so strange. This is as a result of lack of wide consultation because some of these laws came into place. In the past, in the past, we used to say that it's because of military, but the, the Copyright Act 2022 is not a product of military, it's a product of a democratic elected government. I was at home when somebody drew my attention that, ah, there are uh, the Senate uh, hearing committee on uh, the copyright act is going on. Am I not aware? As I'm not aware. So those who ought to be aware will not be aware to make their input. Rich, I don't know whether you were aware. You, you attended that Senate committee. Were you aware? I was aware, sir. Well, yeah, okay. yeah, board minister. Apple. So lack of popular support is one of the challenges. Then striking a balance between public interest and private rights. Then also fearless and independent judiciary is also a threat to the IP law. Not just fearless and independent judiciary, our judiciary going by our school university curriculum, you will agree that IP at our at the university level, the library, there is deficiency in the knowledge which we need to upgrade. And you also agree that most of our our judges, when it comes to our IP matter, their knowledge, their knowledge is not that as sound as other areas of the law. Then also the, the school curriculum and the and the library, these are also need to be upgraded. Then corruption, then lack of personnel who are who are well skills in matters related to IP. When I mean personnel, I'm talking of NCC staff and custom, because the custom also have a role to play at the border. Now, before uh, we Mr. talk of- Mr. Raxin, please, you need to wrap up a, a minute because yes, we still to, have I'm more questions. I'm going Thank to wrap you. up. Thank you. And, uh, Rita, my, my, this number one is going to dovetail into the number four. So I'm, go I'm going to wrap up. But before I talk about the sources of the IP law, briefly, Briefly, I just want to talk briefly about piracy, the views of scholars about piracy. Now, piracy, if you, if you look very well, piracy or pirate, you flip through our laws. There is nowhere you will see the word piracy. 
The only close place you will see, you will see is in section 49 of the Copyright Act 2022 that talks about anti piracy measure. Talk about anti piracy measure. Nowhere pi uh, piracy was defined. There is nowhere piracy was defined under our extant law. But with your little research, you will now realize that piracy means people who engages, people that engage in an authorized copying of a creative people's work. More or less, it's an emotional term put forward by the IP owners to create some kind of marketing consciousness among consumers and to be able to pre press for a stiffer law. But however, we have two, two, two school of thoughts about matters relating to piracy, just for scholarly reason that we should know this. That's why I'm pointing it out, for just for scholarly reason. Now, there are a school of thought that believes strongly that piracy has something to contribute. They should be legalized. In the sense that piracy can also create jobs, piracy can also uh, 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 create uh, finances, but the difference between piracy and creators is that they don't pay tax, which is more or less tinting against uh, the economic and cause economic, uh, uh, you know, crisis. But be that as it may, no matter the side you want to take, the law, Abinisho says, the art of piracy is evil, is bad. Mm. And can Nigeria as a country ever think of, can we legalize piracy no matter what, no matter how they are going to paint it? The answer says no, because we're signature to some of the international treaties that seriously frown at the activities of piracy, like the trips and the Ben Convention. We, Thank with those treaties you. and even our laws, our extant laws, there is no way we can support activities of piracy based mm -hmm. on the security matters, non-payment of tasks, uh, 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 counterfeiting of uh, uh, materials. But however, how far has the law gone, the sources of the IP law? Mr. Mr. Roxy, can we take can we continue the conversation when you're asking your next question so that I have uh, Mr. Okay. Okay. To... Okay. Okay. So I want to talk about yes. the uh, of the IP law. So like... <laughs> Thank you so much. Mr. Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, my next question is we we all came up from the pandemic and the lockdown and we saw how it affected the entertainment industry. So my question to you is how did that affect the media industry in Nigeria? And what are the strategies and measures that, let's say, you have adopted and your other industry players have ad adopted to actually cope uh, with the lockdown measures then and then the high cost of operations in view of our current reality right now in Nigeria? So, Mr. Oludotun, Olu that is your question, please. <laughs> Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for the yeah. question, I really do. Um, it's very important uh, for us to talk about this because um, prior to the COVID-19, filmmakers would uh, shoot their films and you know, we take it to the cinemas. Sometimes you put on YouTube, depending on the um, means by which each uh, filmmaker decides to distribute that their content. But of course, the pandemic brought about uh, a very big change because uh, Netflix, for example, uh, is a streaming platform that had existed before the COVID-19. But uh, COVID-19 came and everybody was in lockdown. We would sit in our houses. I remember I was, you know, I was very careful. I'll be in the house from morning till night. I remember some time ago, a friend of mine came in, you know, he went to a, the church on a Sunday and he came to my doorstep on his way back and he was like, oh, um, I said, you know, I didn't see you in church. And I was like, I wanted to say hello. I said, please, you have to stay at the door. Don't come in, please. And we don't really have to touch each other because I dreaded the COVID-19 a lot. Um, 
And I think that's, uh, that came as a result of me listening to the news. I wanted to be updated on every bit and pieces of what was happening around the world with COVID-19. You know, so around that time, I also discovered that some people would, I remember we saw some videos of people having uh, performances, you know, in public places, you would see an artist come to a public place sing a song so that people would not get bored in the house. And I think that was exactly what led us to Netflix. Because uh, at that time, people are bored in their house. You cannot watch your television from morning till night. You hear news, you see a lot of varieties. But, you know, you are constrained in, a, in, in, in your apartment. And then you start to feel very uncomfortable. And that's when Netflix came in. They gave us entertainment at, it be at its best. We would sit down, watch Netflix from morning till night. And I think from that point onward, people started seeing that, oh, okay, yes. Now, since people are tuning to Netflix to see movies, even these filmmakers, that I am one of them, obviously, um, you know, we felt that coming out of the pandemic, the way to go is Netflix. Because um, there, for example, you have a wider reach. Initially, when you go to cinemas, it's only people that attend that cinema that go to that particular show that see your film. But right now, you can make a film that the entire world will have access to. You know, so we embrace the digital streaming and distribution uh, platform. And uh, one other thing I'd like to point out is that the COVID-19 pandemic has affected the media and entertainment industry in pre-production. Then there used to be uh, pre-production means uh, planning before the shoot of our films. That's the one we call principal photography. It also affected uh, that area because then we would always have to have the physical meeting to have what we call a table read. That's when the director and the actors will have to read the entire script together. When we want to have production meetings, we needed to attend physically. But now, after the during and even after the COVID-19 pandemic, we started virtual meetings. Of course, uh, one of such meetings is the one that we are having now on, uh, um, on uh, this platform, which is Zoom. Because Zoom was not popular. I remember, remember that we had uh, um, virtual meetings either with uh, Google, um, meet or, or there was something we called the uh, team viewer but you know the pandemic just brought uh, this particular zoom and even though there was zoom before then but then uh, during the pandemic it was just zoom 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 and everybody went you know on zoom and this also helps us to reduce the cost of production you know when you want to make a movie the pandemic also affected because when we went for physical meetings, there is always a pre-production allowance where you're given some money to for your feeding and of course for your transportation down to the place and maybe some extra uh, money for inconvenience. So, but uh, COVID-19 has also helped us. So for the media and entertainment industry, I would say um, it has done a lot more good than uh, am for us because we have benefited a lot. And it also allows us to, you know, embrace collaborations, international collaborations. If I want to have a meeting with somebody in the United States or the United Kingdom, I don't have to travel. If you, uh, for example, see my film on, um, on an SDO, SVOD platform, you could reach out to me via my Instagram handle or whatever means, then we now come to have a meeting more like a physical meeting on such platforms as uh, Zoom or Google Meet and all of them, all, and all of that. So, um, yeah. So these measures have helped the industries, uh, I mean, industry to improve and to cut down on costs, in my opinion. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that contribution. So as a follow-up to um, your conversation, uh, what would you say are the best practices that you have uh, adopted 
uh, in order to leverage opportunities of digital tech, such as uh, digital streaming, online platforms, to be able to reach wider audience and generate more revenue. Are there specific things that you look out for as a, a director or a cinematographer? Okay, yeah. So if I get your question correctly, you're asking what uh, um, steps we have taken after the COVID-19 to unless our work. Am I correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, after the COVID-19, like I mentioned, that we had, uh, we had uh, virtual meetings and all of that, I think it opened up our eyes also to the fact that um, you could sometimes earn more from your creativity. And uh, it also opens our eyes to the fact that um, as against you going to, you going to um, executive producers, financiers who would give you money and limit your project because there are not a lot of money even if, if, if I would say prior to the COVID-19, people did not really know that we could make so much money making films. Um, yeah, because you could notice that after COVID-19, we started seeing Nigeria come out on a bigger scale to make productions. And this was also enabled by the streaming platforms where they have their own originals. If you are a professional who has, you know, out, out of the abundant people that we have making content you have stood out to be somebody who creates ex i mean like um excellent content streaming platforms will reach out to you and uh tell you you know and say okay we want to have a collaboration with you which is also what led to my recent uh film that won an award i got uh the contacts all the way from uganda somebody reached out and they told me that um, they would like for me to be on their platform. For example, yesterday, was it this morning or yesterday? Yeah, yesterday, I got um, a mail. Um, I can't even remember from what country. Somebody reached out and they said, okay, they saw some of my content and they would like for me to participate in their, in their um, film festival. So that is, you know, if you notice, I've been mentioning Netflix, Netflix. As a matter of fact, this particular film that they saw was something that I uploaded on YouTube. So YouTube is also a platform that had been in existence way back. Like, I'm not sure YouTube has, I think YouTube has been around for over 20 years, but many people did not really find it that interesting. Uh, but then when we all came uh, to the COVID-19, we saw that, okay, we had no choice. Everybody will fiddle with their phones from morning till night. And these are platforms that, we have also a nest. You upload your film on uh, YouTube and you monetize it and get some payment from it. So it has really helped our, our, our industry as a director. Um, it has really helped my journey. Um, a lot of people have known me now. Um, yeah, so there are advantages and disadvantages. But like I said, it has done more good than, than harm. And it has helped uh, publicize us and let us reach a larger audience. Fantastic, fantastic. And congrats again on your recent award. So back to Mr. Roxin, because I don't think Uche will be joining us anytime soon. But um, you were about to talk about intellectual property rights. So I'm just going to ask you, how can the Nigerian media and entertainment industry collaborate with other stakeholders, such as the government agency, civil societies, um, international partners, consumers, and also practitioners like us who are in the industry to create awareness and also promote respect for intellectual property right. I think um, I think the introductory, the objective of the Copyright Act talks about helping to promote and create awareness. So from a practitioner's standpoint, what would you say are the things that we need to do to put this in place? Well, uh, enough, enough access is uh, to see that uh, with John Hans, we are like uh, say to raise a child, it takes the whole village in raising a child. So uh, this is what uh, the creative industry, if it booms, if they boom in the creative industry, 
it affects the economy. So all hands have to be on deck. We must ensure whether NGO or individual, how you can contribute. As an individual, you can make a donation of books to the library, university library. You can drop, when you go to our various investors, like books that are there, they are obsolete. They are addicted. You can donate to NCC, you can donate to the judiciary, and also you can also contribute. You understand? You have an NGO, you can contribute for training. Because if our judiciary, they are well trained in matters related to IP, we, are, we will be in a safer hand. So they need to create that consciousness. Then from whatever angle they suggest. But after all, must always be in the front of at the National Assembly. Reason being that if you check the NCC budget, if you check the NCC budget they are using, I don't think their budget for a year not I stand to be corrected. I don't think it's more than 10 million naira. And inside that, that is the amount they're going to use for training, they're going to use for uh, attending a seminar. So for a creative and an organization put in place to handle creative matters. And the budget is 10 million naira. I don't think the government or the country is serious. I don't think we are serious. We are not ready. You go to the trademark office, it's manual, it's all rubbish. You see the you, you see the sick carrying fire. So we still need to push our representative. They need good budget, and they also need to go digital too. They need to see go digital. Then the laws must be from time to time, like the last copyright act now, 2002, and it was amended now so many years, almost 20 something years or so. This has to be more frequent. We don't have to wait for 20 something years. Because for any new law you are making now, once it stays for two days, there might be some loophole. So from time to time, we must review and to see how we can actually come up. And whatever law, it has to be brought this. Then areas in the copyright are that talks about damages. Areas in the copyright are that talk about damages. It's not enough. If it is not punitive damages, it is not enough to discourage a, a piracy war. Because Nobody knows the statistic of piracy. If they pirated your work and they sell for one billion naira, man, how are you going to arrive at that, improving that to the court so that you can get adequate compensation when they don't keep statistics? So they need to add punitive damages in the act. That is separate from other statutory damages that you are going to collect so that it's going to be as a, a, a punishment for anybody who engages in in a, in art of piracy. Onyeka Wenu was in court for almost uh, almost six years. What did she what she got five hundred thousand naira after after six years. <laughs> five hundred thousand naira. How much is she paying the, the 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 lawyer? She's going to pay the lawyer more than that. And I know she issued a press uh, a press release crying. Now, in most cases, the judge will tell you that what are they going to lean on? And actually, you will not blame them, the other side, because they are not going to conjure figures for you. So that aspect of the copyright act has to be taken care of. Training of personnel, judges, custom, NCC uh, staff, there must be proper training for them, the other side, to understand this issue. But those are, those are, it's not, it's not a open, it's not a closed, uh, closed. So these are some of the main, the main area that we have to, to look at. Then uh, producers, big producers, they must also try to mix supply with demand because that is where the pirates no money capitalize on. So, but when the, the supply meets the demand, they won't be, they won't be that uh, a good production to begin to produce. 
So I think so far so good. Those are the those are the few points that I can uh, put forward. Rita, hello. Thank you. Good afternoon. So thank you very much okay. for that. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, another another point to the so procedure. Can you hear me? Hello. That the. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can. Yes, I can. I can hear you. Yes. 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 Mr. Rossi, you want to say something? Yes, I said, on another area, the prosecuting power of the NCC, uh, the laws has to be watered down so that private prosecuting, they can make it easy so that you have a choice when it comes to uh, whether NCC will prosecute your case or you want to go for a private prosecution. Although the law will say there's there's room for private prosecution, but you and I know that uh, the requirement is not easy. So they should try to water it down so that you have a choice. Because we, there are situations where we take matters to the NCC at times. They will play the role of the, the judiciary. They will begin to interpret document. you understand? Interpret agreement. Oh, this is this, this is this, this is this. The work they ought not to do. But when you have a clear alternative choice that you can, you can get a private lawyer to prosecute your matter, you won't, you won't pass through that rigor. We've gone through a situation where you say, oh, the agreement says this. So there is no breach. And we went to court. And we, 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 got an, uh, we, we got a judgment contrary to what NCC was telling us. So I think issue related to private uh, prosecution, uh, prosecuting power to be so watered down that you have a clear choice, either you want to use the NCC inspectors to prosecute your case, or you get a private prosecutor. So that is very important. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's a good recommendation, especially in view of uh, uh, I think the section 90, which talks about NCC creating. Uh, my final questions before we get into the Q&A session for Mr. What are the challenges and prospects of access to funds or financing for those in the um, entertainment and media industry? Um, how do you access technology, get quality materials for production and distribution of media and entertainment content other than Netflix now that we are all going for? Uh, but are there challenges that you face while trying to assess funds uh, technology in Nigeria or as an African? Mr. Oludotson, did you get my question? I didn't quite get it clearly, but... Um, okay, so I was talking I about access... Idea. You said what... Go on, go on. Cinematographers are anyone in the interface um, trying to add up? Okay, so I think my internet froze uh, for a bit there. But um, the, the question is, I, it, it, from what I got, is that um, what are the challenges uh, in terms of access to funds and uh, technology in the media and entertainment uh, industry in Nigeria? Is that what you asked? Can you hear me? That's what I asked. Oh, oh, great. So um, yes, yes. There, is, there, is, there, there is always the challenge of uh, access to funds because um, I really don't know why we have that challenge. I think um, it's because of uh, 
the way things work in our country. For example, if you approach a bank and you tell them you want to access a loan, for example, I do not have a salary account and they tell you, oh, you don't have um, a property or a collateral and all of that, you know, without necessarily looking into your um, bank history, like transaction history, how much comes into your account, how much goes out of it. I believe the banks have access to all of these things. Uh, yeah, but the approach that personally I have decided to take is to go for film competitions, is to go for film festivals, and is to also try to raise some funds personally, because uh, it, it, it's really difficult for people to put their money down and say, okay, go and make films. Because there is one thing that we uh, were taught while I was in the film school is that when you ask anybody to bring their money on a project, do not give them a guarantee. Do not tell them that this money that you're putting down, you're going to get so, so, so amount of money. You're going to get, oh, 100% um, return on investment because it's a risk that you as a creative you're taking is a risk that that person is also taking as uh, to invest. But uh, the other part is that we've also seen films that people spend as much as 16 million Naira to produce. And this film went on into the box office to gross as much as 500 million. And you ask yourself, how does 16 million Naira make 500 million? And there are other projects where people will spend as much as 30 million naira and you know they'll be forced to sell that project out for like 6 million naira so there is always the challenge of access to fund because of uh, this uh, risk so another approach is that we um, diversify our sources and engage investors um, you have a project that is costing about 60 70 million naira uh, we've seen it, you know, before, before now, people would go to an executive producer and that person would bring the money and make a film. But right now you can actually approach as much as I, I see that trend in recent times, you know, even the popular, um, the Black Book, the recent Nigerian movie that, uh, you know, we hear people talk about everywhere. If you check the credit list at the end of the day, you see a lot of executive producers. So one thing that we also do is to diversify our funding sources. You talk to more than two, three people. Some people actually believe in your project and um, they would like to invest, but not as much as you would want them to invest. We have a project we're currently working on. Um, it's, I, I think it's a 45 million Naira project. And we have people who are executive producers coming on board with just 5 million. We have people coming up with 20 million. We have people coming up with 2, 3 million. We have people coming up with their own resources as against, you know, bringing the money. For example, um, we did a project about uh, two months ago, um, one popular production house in Lagos. I don't want to mention the name. Uh, came on board to supply all of the equipments that we needed uh, for that production. So that's another way. Even despite the fact that we have these challenges, we, we diversify our sources. You don't want everything to be in terms of money. Um, of course, they have monetary value, but cash is what I'm talking about. Um, there's a project we're also working on. I Like we have many projects we're working on at the moment. There's a project we're also working on in partnership with some other studios in Nigeria. Some people have equipment from beginning to the end but what they don't have is this fund so they are bringing all of the equipment i have access to a lot of people that would love to work with me that are currently if you check my social medias aside from my direct messages i have a lot of messages from people hello sir we would like to work with you we would like to do this and that with you you know we have so much crew members that are willing to come on board even at a reduced rate from their actual rate that they collect on a daily basis. So um, we, we diversify, like I said, we have people bring some money, we have people bring equipment, we have some other people bringing the manpower on board. That's another approach that we take. Then in terms of technology and infrastructure, 
I really do not think that Nigerians have a challenge with technology. For example, um, a project I shot two months ago, I shot it on a camera that is called Sony Venice 2. Was like it's the it's the um, what's the word now? Like the camera that Sony put out as their biggest camera. And you ask me when they made this camera, they just made that camera last uh, year or some years ago, but it was released not until maybe last year. And this camera is already in Nigeria. So in terms of technology, I do not think that we have a lot of challenge because the best of equipments are readily available in Nigeria. But one thing I think that we need to work on uh, that we have the challenge in the Nigeria media space, um, you know, I mentioned funding the other time, is the quality of work that we do. Uh, sometimes I think Africans have a lot of stories to tell. If you ask me, I've spoken with my mom, you know, with my grandmother, there are things that have happened in the remote villages that is not in the public knowledge or, you know, not in the knowledge of many people globally. And these things are stories that people want to hear the African stories, because in the past we've had foreign people coming to tell African stories, but that's, that's what it still is. It's not Africans telling their own stories. So they will tell our stories the way that they think it should be told using their own approach. But recently we started seeing approaches by Africans to tell their own stories. And you see the stories, that, I mean, telling style is not the same as what we are used to from you know, uh, what has been obtainable in the past. But what I'm saying in essence is the quality of production that we release out there, we need the, the, the African creators to get better in our craft, to own our craft and uh, deliver uh, better. But you know, um, another thing I would like to digress a little bit, I would like to mention is the fact that when when uh, Mr. Roxin was talking, he was talking about piracy. I think it's something that we also need to talk about. Creators are afraid of making content that will be pirated. If you are sure and you have that confidence that whatever money I invest into this project, it is only wherever I take my projects to, that is where that project gets to. You, are, you, know, you have a level of assurance that your money will come back, you'll get return on your investments. But he also said something that is very pertinent, that we are not, um, I don't know if that is permitted, a serious country when it comes to these issues. For example, we know the popular Alaba market. There in Alaba market, there is a lot of piracy going on. And I feel that if there is clamp down today, clamp down tomorrow, clamp down next tomorrow, and these things continue, it will reduce this piracy to a great extent. There should be government agencies, maybe not the police now, that will put on uniforms and attend to all of these things. Just walking around the market, you know that they exist. I know that's not the question that you asked me, but this is also a challenge. We're afraid. We're afraid that if I put so much money into this production, will I get my money? Another thing is that these um, IP protection laws are not readily available to us. There are not many entertainment lawyers that you will approach. And there is also that idea that lawyers are very expensive. When you approach them, your half of your money is going for you know that protection and all of that. There is that part of it. So um, I think it's a it's a big challenge. For example, last week I traveled to Ibado by train. Okay, yes, so I travel to Ibadan, Yes, please, let me wrap up. I travel to Ibadan by, by train. And would it surprise you that on a national train, I was seeing a pirated movie? You know, somebody went on Netflix, downloaded somebody's movie, and they uploaded on a website that they call Niger Rocks. And the Nigerian um, Railway Commission whoever it is that is, was in charge of that, allowed them to bring a movie that is pirated on the train for more than 300, 500 Nigerians to watch. The makers of this movie could be on that train. For example, myself, I was afraid that, oh, if this is done, 
to these big people? Like, who am I? You know, so there are there are lots of challenges that we face. Sometimes you make a movie with 10 million naira, and when you want to even go into litigation, you are spending as much as 20 million naira. I don't know. I've never had a litigation before, but you know, there is that general assumption in the creative uh, industry. So these are the few challenges that we that we have. Access to fund, quality of materials, and this piracy is a menace that we have to deal with. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jake. Very, this is a very controversial. I'm sure a lot of our participants do not agree with you. Uh, but those IP laws are really available. I think I'm seeing that the new provision for uh, to take measures on the new act should be to solve the very issues. I think you guys can, your industry can also engage the collective society to be your collective society to help to these issues. Again, this is very important. The standard that has existed is always with everybody. But I think that our skin has something to say. I hope you can see that in one minute. We have eight minutes to go. I have seen a question here from our participants, but Chamaka. And the movies are secretary for the first sentiment that media committee says, I do think, I do think it was PC or enforcement in So, that if I think it's up to you, let's try to respond to what uh, the last speaker said. Or this is going to be your final comment on the conversation. Can you hear me? Richard, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, he talked something about the Alapa that I wanted to ship in something because uh, what I did, what I wrote in my LLM in entertainment law, a comparative, comparative study, comparative study of British and Nigerian law against film piracy, successes and challenges. So. Comparative study of British and Nigerian law against film piracy, successes and challenges. You see this issue, this issue relating to Alaba, it might even interest you, particularly in the music industry, particularly those young musicians. They will release their music and take, take their single to Alaba market and pay their money to Evo Pirate. <laughs> They will take their music to that Alaba market and also pay the pirates to parade their music. I don't know whether you've heard of that. That they, okay, put it in the midst of a popular musician. So that when they release those CD with a whiskey, they will, they will not put their music as a way of promoting them. So it's a, it's a complicated issue. Not just the pirates pirating their work, but they're taking their work to pirate and also paying the pirate to parade their work. So that, that, that is just what I, want, I wanted to point, uh, I want to point out to, to him. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Rose. So I think we have questions um, for our panelists. Check your audio, your audio is good for Check your audio. Is it better now? I think it's a network. It's better now. Oh my gosh. Can you guys actually hear me? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, so today, someone asked the question what's the best step to securing copyright of entertainment from the media to the public? And that's from that's the only question we have for little Mr. Rusty. Can you answer that in one minute? You said what? What is the best step to securing copyright of entertainment from the studio to the public? Securing what? Can you write it? Then you write it. And it would be oh, better than Copyright. Yeah. Copyright is in Chinese session. Copyright. Do you hear me? No, I can't hear you well. Yes, sir. Copyright. 
Uh, please Not check the Q and A, sir. Check the Q and A. The question is there. Okay. Okay. He says, uh, what is the best step to securing copyright of entertainers for the studio, from the studio to the public? Okay. Uh, you go by the provision of the Copyright Act, whether 2004 or, 2000, uh, or 2022. Copyright, one, you must satisfy the requirement of uh, that you put in you put in effort that is the originality the originality doesn't mean that it must be original in the in the in the in the in the, in the sense of originality but originality from the perspective that it originated from you and there was an effort that you put in and also in a medium known or later to be known it must be in a medium if you satisfy this requirement then you secure your copyright it must not be subjected to any formality. In the recess of the world, you don't need any registration. But with the new copyright act now, uh, there are some provisions that encourages that you register. Because they said once there is a registration and that is tender in the court, that is a conclusive proof. But also the same section from beginning saying that copyright is not subject to form formality in line with uh, uh, the bank convention. So number one, it must be in a medium that they can assess. Two, you must have put in effort. Three, it must have originated from you. So those are the requirements. Hello, can you hear me? Loud and clear, sir. So those are the, if you satisfy that requirement, that means you secure your copyright. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Roxin, and thank you. Like, like for example now, like a, a stage manager now, a stage manager is blocking in a piece of paper. That piece of paper is sufficient to be a medium. A stage manager blocking of a stage performance that he reduced into a piece of paper, a notebook. That that notebook is a sufficient medium mm. in the eyes of the law. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Roxy. So final comments from our speakers. Um, final comments with regards to the topic. I don't know, I can see. Mr. Oludotun, do you have any final comments regarding the topic? Uh, Mr. Roxy, do you have any final words as well? Well, what I want to say, all hands has to be on deck. Yes. I can assure our listener that the creative industry, the money that can come out of the creative industry is more than all year money. All hmm. year we come, all year we come and go, but creativity is forever. All hmm. year we come and go, but creativity is forever. So that's my final word. Thank you so much, Mr. Roxy. Mr. Oludotu, final words from you. So we wrap up. Okay. Here. So um, my final words will be that um, I would want to plead with the Nigeria Bar Association. To, I, I, first, I would like to thank you for this initiative that uh, you have started. And I think it's really going to go a long way in... Uh, helping creatives and what i would like to say is that we organize a physical um event where creatives will come together with lawyers you know and um have these conversations because i may not remember to even mention quite a number of things because uh we feel we when we discuss for example we have projects that we want to do and when we want to do our partnerships we rack our brain. Sometimes we do gentleman's agreement. Sometimes we want lawyers to be involved. But, you know, the fear of, okay, how much are you going to pay a lawyer? Um, there is always that conversation, I can tell you. 
that um, mm -hmm. we believe that lawyers are very expensive. And you know the Nigerian uh, idea that, oh, uh, nobody wants to go to court. Nobody, you know, while growing up, our parents used to pray that prayer that, Allah, my jaro, my job. That's in Yoruba, mm -hmm. that God forbid that we have any reason to go to court. Uh, so mm -hmm. everybody thinks that the court is a place for evil. But so what I'll ah. say in conclusion, like I said, is for Nigeria Bar Association to come up with programs like this, but a physical one where creatives will come together with lawyers and, you know, we will network and have these conversations. There are many things that are bothering us that we, we need to be very much aware of. You talk about the IP laws, for example. We are not aware of these laws. We are creative. All that we are concerned about is the creativity, but we need our works to be protected, or we need to have the relationship with lawyers before uh, that can be achieved, I believe. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, I'm very grateful. Thank you so much, Mr. Olodotun, for accepting our invitation, for sharing your insight. There's a question for you, but I'll forward it to you via email so you can answer, and then we'll send to the participant. But I see that our chairman of the Sports and Ent Sports Entertainment and Media Committee is online. The person of Mrs. Beverly Abakuba. Beverly, please, close a remark from you, and then we'll wrap up because it's three years already. Thank you so much, Vice Chair, and Again, I want to say a really big thank you to our panelists. You were very, as always, uh, Mr. Roxon, we can always expect you to be effervescent, lively. Mr. Ludotun, it's, it's great to actually relate with you. Um, um, I, I, I was very attracted to your post on LinkedIn, and that's how I, I, I spotted you. And... Um, I, I really want to thank you for, you know, talking to us at the bar about collaboration. And it's something that I'm particularly big on. Collaboration is the new competition. And thank you for emphasizing that that aspect is really important um, in this creative industry. Like uh, my dear colleague Roxon alluded to, um, the creative economy is absolutely massive. And let's all key in to, to, to the new ministry that has been created. There's now a standalone ministry. Let's key in to the roadmap. Let's all join hands. Let's all um, um, get deeper into this sector. And um, one thing I want to say, <laughs> Mr. Oludotun, I know you said that there's that worry and fear about um, lawyers and how much they cost. See, I always say this, there's... there's there's a there's a there's an opportunity cost and then there's there's a loss. If, if we continuously um, you know operate from a point of fear, we're worried about how much they're going to charge. You will still end up losing in the long run. In by 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 in terms of um, lost opportunities, in terms of poorly negotiated contracts. So please, these are things that can easily be negotiated. Fees should not get in the way of getting the best service. But um, Without further ado, I want to just say a big thank you to my vice chair in the form of Ms. Anwiri Rita Chinda. You did brilliantly. Thank you for spearheading this conversation and generally enlightening us all on the issues of piracy and how to monetize our creative talent. Please. Don't support piracy. Don't watch pirate movies on internet, or I'm not gonna name names. I want us to keep pushing that flag. Let's be flag bearers. Let's remember that behind every movie, song, play, theater, there are people at the back of all those creative works that have put their blood, sweat, and tears into getting this out. So every time we we watch something pirated, we are effectively not just cheating them, we are cheating ourselves as well. Thank you so much on behalf of my committee, my amazing committee. I also see our able secretary chairman, and uh, we look forward to more um, exciting and exciting. 
wonderful um, um, sessions. The chair of chairs is on. It would be lovely if he can say a few words. Oh, I think he's dropped off now. I think he's dropped off. Dr. Adeoye was on a few minutes ago. So I'll just say um, on behalf of Dr. Adeoye Adefulu, a very big thank you. And uh, till next time, God bless and take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, Chair, once again. Thank you to our panelists. Thank you to our participants. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Have a good afternoon, everyone. Bye.